So now I'd like to go ahead and just show you some more form elements. We've already talked about text box, but there are some other uh, form field elements called checkbox. I know you've all seen these before. Um, radio buttons, um, text area, and then select or, or drop down. I'm going to go ahead and reset so you can see how that works. Now before I talk about coding these, I wanted to give you um, a quick example of something else. And that is, um, back in our form when we were talking about get and post, I didn't really explain to you what the difference is with get. So let me just show that to you. This is a very simple form. This is the one where you just have the um, enter. You just enter the first name and then go to the confirm page. So I just changed from from post to get. So let's go see what that does. I, I save my file, and um, and then let me go and look at that. And I'm just going to refresh. And then um, so now I'm going to submit it. And what I wanted to point out is that when you use the get, notice that um, this stuff gets uh, added on to the end of the URL. So there's a question mark and then the data will show up as pairs. Um, so this is the field name, first name, and then the value, whatever you typed in the form, gets stuck in there. So that's the difference between um, get and put. So you can see, like, this would be a valuable way to, um, to, to use a form if you wanted to do a search or something, because then I could just go ahead and copy this URL and send it to someone, and then they could use it. Well, not this URL, because I'm looking at it locally, as you can tell by the word file. OK, anyway, let's go back to these other um, form fields and talk about them. So let me open up Sublime and we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so um, so we, we did our text field already. Now let's look at the checkbox. So with the checkbox, um, the, the type is checkbox and then um, you would just use name and ID the same way that you would for the text type. And then the value, this is what would get sent to the um, the processing file. Um, so in this case I have more than one um, checkbox. I have one for IE and I have one for, um, for Firefox. Um, now notice that I have the value that the user sees is just entered as text afterward. Now later we'll learn how to use a label to attach that to the actual um, f um, element, but we won't worry about that for now. So we use a checkbox when um, when we want to give people uh, more than one choice. So like if they could choose more than one thing, then a checkbox is an is an appropriate um, uh, form element to use. Okay, so, well actually let's go back and look. So for radio button, we would use a radio button when you want to select from a small group of things and you only want to select one thing. And, um, and then we would use um, a menu, like a drop-down menu, when you have a lot, a lot, a lot of things. Like you wouldn't want to use a radio buttons if you have, um, you know, like a bunch of states. You know, once you get past five things, it gets to be a little user unfriendly. And that's when a drop-down menu would make more sense because it takes up less space on the screen. Now, if you only have a few things, radio button is more usable because it just shows everything right there. They don't have to click and hold down the um, drop-down menu. Okay, so let's look at how to code radio buttons. So um, for radio buttons, the way that we code it is the type is radio. And then notice that here we're doing something a little different with the name and ID. So to make um, radio buttons work in a group, which means that if you select one, then the others become unselected, then you have to give them all the same name. Now the IDs can be different. Um, and um, 
and then the value again is what gets sent to the um, the processing page, the action, and um, and then you put the um, what you want the user to see just right after it. The, that's the label. Um, so when if this were to get sent as a pair, you know, like the um, the label and the value, um, then then the the label would be fav browser equals, um, and then it would be IE Firefox or Chrome. Okay, text area is a little different because um, uh, because it has more than one line, and you can specify that with rows. You can specify how wide it would be with the columns. Now, instead of saying um, Instead of saying a type here, you actually use a text area um, element name, and so it's a little different from the um, the type. Like if we look up here, um, I'm sorry, from the text the text box. So if the type for that one is text, and we don't use a type for text area. So we just surround everything with the text area tag. And then, um, and then what shows up in the box goes um, in between the opening and closing text area tag. And then um, you have your name, your ID, and then you can use columns and rows to specify how big you want the box to be. Um, so let's go just take a look at that one more time. So here's what it looks like. Um, okay, so now let's finally look at the select for that we use for drop downs. So with this one, um, it's it's um, it's like t text area where it's its own um, element. It's not you're not using um, the input type equals syntax. Okay, so we're going to say select, and then we give it a name and an ID, and they should be the same. And then we have options. So um, now this first option only has um, like I'm not, I'm just putting it in there kind of as a placeholder to show up um, when it loads. But most um, options, all the other options, they're going to have a value, and um, and then the part that shows up um, in the on the screen. And so the value again, this is the data. This is the value that would get sent to. Um, to the whatever program is going to process this. So in this case, the pair would be browser menu equals Firefox or browser menu equals Chrome. So that's how that works.